What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic, and today it's time for another episode of Ask Majestex. So it's, believe it or not, it's been, I think, over a year or well over a year since I've done one of these videos, so I have been slacking on this. But if you're not familiar with it, it's basically where I go through the comment section and pick out a bunch of questions from you guys and answer them here on video. All right, so the very first question actually comes from Instagram, which is interesting. Now, I admittedly am not really that active on IG. If you guys are interested in me posting more on IG, let me know in the comment section and go ahead and make sure you follow me on IG, Twitter, Facebook, and all those other places as well. But anyway, a few weeks ago, I posted a picture of a pretty interesting looking laptop made by Asus. And in the comment section, I got an interesting comment from Rookie55. So he says, pretty crazy, is the bottom screen functional or more of just just a gimmick. So I want to take this opportunity to actually talk a little bit about this laptop. So the laptop in that picture is actually the Asus ROG Zephyrus Duo 15. And this is a gaming laptop made by Asus that is pretty interesting as you can see. And before I even get into the crazy specs on this thing, the very first thing you'll notice is that it has two screens. So this is clearly a gaming laptop and the main display is a 15.6 inch 300 Hertz full HD panel with G-Sync. And just to quickly go over the specs, this thing has a 10th gen Intel Core i7, an NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and two terabyte SSDs and a RAID 0 for crazy fast storage and even Wi-Fi 6. All right, so now to answer your question about how functional the second screen is. Now, I do have to say I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna use it for, but after I used the laptop a little bit more, I did find it useful. So if you're a game streamer, the first two things that come to mind is to use it to keep an eye on your video, keep an eye out on your chat so you can keep in contact with your followers, and you can use it for OBS to make sure your stream is healthy. And what I personally found it really useful for was for video editing. So I use Adobe Premiere to edit my videos, and I was able Able to use the second screen for the bin where I keep all of my files so I can easily drag them into the other screen which is really helpful if you're editing on a laptop. Now this particular version that I have with me today costs around $3,000 so it's not necessarily cheap but you are getting a lot for your money and there are a bunch of different specs and different variations you can get with this laptop and I will be posting some links in the video description for you to check those out if you're interested. All right, so let's move on. The next question is from C-Note, and he says, I wonder if Samsung has a gag order for reviews on their new short throw. They still have not sent you yours to review, and every video out there is currently pretty much just an unboxing with no real review. I'm curious to get your take on it and how it matches up to the LG HU85 LA. Now, C-Note, I definitely understand where you're coming from. I have been waiting, I wanna say, at least two months now for this ultra short throw. I'm at a point now where I don't know if it's ever gonna come, and I may end up having to just spend the money and buy it myself. Now, as far as whether or not Samsung has a gag order for reviews, I hope that's not true, but you guys know I only do honest reviews here. Either way, as soon as I get it, you guys know I'm gonna let you know, even though I expect it, it's gonna be pretty good. All right, so moving on to the next question. The next question is from Mark Day Mariasi. So he says, hey, Chris, just saw the announcement about the LG HU81 OP. This seems to tick a lot of boxes, but no reviews out there yet. Do you know if you'll be able to get one in to look at soon? Now, believe it or not, LG did reach out to me, I wanna say about a month and a half, maybe two months ago, to ask me if I would be interested in reviewing this projector. And of course I said yes. And actually the other day, LG reached out to me again to let me know they're gonna be sending it out soon. So as soon as I get it, you guys know I'm going to give you my honest opinion and tell you how it stacks up against the competition. All right, let's move on to the next question. So I have a question from Java, and they say, what's the monitor you have in the background on the desk? This monitor has been sitting behind me for the past two years or so, and I don't think I've ever really talked about it, but this is the BenQ PV3200PT, which is a professional video editing monitor. Now, unfortunately, I don't think they make this particular version anymore, but there is a newer version, and I will put a link in the video description for that version in case you're interested. But this is a $1,300 32 inch 4K video editing monitor. And over here on this side, which is out of the camera frame, is a BenQ EW3280U. So this is a $700 32 inch 4K IPS gaming monitor that's loaded with features. This thing has USB C, it supports HDR10, it has FreeSync, and on top of all of that, it has a pair of built in speakers that sound great with a little subwoofer, and it even has a remote. So whenever I do videos on things like streaming sticks or a video about gaming, or anything like that, I'm gonna be using this. All right, so the next question is gonna be from Ryan K. He says, first, great summary, Chris. 
Thank you. More smart home product reviews would be great. I'm still using a lot of old smart home tech need to upgrade. Now this channel was actually built a lot on doing smart home product reviews. That's how I kind of started this channel. And I've kind of gotten away from it and gotten more into home theater, but I do occasionally still post smart home products. So if you're one of those people who subscribe to this channel for smart home products, go ahead and post in the comment section and let me know what type of products you wanna see. And I might consider running out to the store grabbing those products to give you my thoughts on them. All right, so the next question is from Frubilation. I think that's what that says. And it says, what is Wi-Fi 6 and why am I watching? So in my last best wireless router video, I had only Wi-Fi 6 routers and I didn't really go into too much detail about Wi-Fi 6 and I'm not really gonna do that here either, but Wi-Fi 6 is the newest version of Wi-Fi with Wi-Fi 6E coming right behind it this year. And if I have to be 100% honest with you, if you're in the market right now for a wireless router, if you need one right now, definitely go out and buy buy one of those Wi-Fi 6 routers that I mentioned in that video, but if you can hold off for a little bit, you will start to see Wi-Fi 6E routers pop up on the market. Without getting into too much detail, Wi-Fi 6E is gonna be on a totally different band, which is gonna be six gigahertz, as opposed to Wi-Fi 6, which still use the older channels, but just gave us a little bit more performance. Either way, I will be recapping all the new wireless routers and the ones that I think are the best at the end of this year. So of course, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that video. All right, so the next question is gonna be from vpix underscore com. And he says, still using the XPA11 with your clip speakers? And the answer is yes and no. So yes, I am still using the Emotiva XPA11, which if you don't know, is an amplifier that I reviewed a few months ago or about a year ago now. Um, and I am still using that amplifier, but I'm not using it with the the clip speakers anymore. So if you've seen my home theater in my last few recent videos, you might have noticed that there are no clip speakers and there are some smaller speakers there. Well, those are actually the definitive technology or also known as DefTech speakers that DefTech sent out to me a couple months ago for you to give you my thoughts on it. So I will tell you that I like them a lot and I will be posting a video really soon for those speakers. So make sure you look out for that video. All right, the last question is gonna come from Sean Davis and he says, hello, Chris, thank you for all your great reviews. I was wondering if you could do one that advises if a projector owner should upgrade their 1080p projector like the BenQ W1070 to an HT 3550 or TK850 or maybe an Epson 3800. Are they that much better? Thank you again for all the great advice. So this question comes up all the time, especially from my friends, my personal friends who still have 1080p projectors. And I'll tell you there are two things to consider. The first thing is to make sure your room is big enough to accommodate a 4K projector, because I don't think I've seen any short throw 4K projectors. Of course, we've seen ultra short throws that sit directly in front of the screen, but there are a lot of people right now running short throw 1080p projectors that are maybe between three and seven feet away from the screen. And some of these 4K projectors that are out there right now can't accommodate that short throw and you need a lot more more space or distance from the screen. So consider that first. The second thing is to simply consider the most important thing, which is budget. So considering that the 4K projectors cost literally double the 1080p projectors, if you don't have the budget, then a 1080p projector is perfectly fine and I still recommend them. But if you had the budget to get something like an HT3550A or one of the other 4K projectors, I would definitely recommend it if you can do it. All right, guys, that's gonna pretty much do it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, go ahead and make sure you mash that like button for me. As I always say, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification and click all so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.